Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and first reviews for X-Men Apocalypse were just released today, um, and it's very mixed. Um, so X-Men Apocalypse is probably one of the most uh, looked forward to films, I'd say, uh, for comic book films uh, in a long time. Now, I, I, I don't know, in 2014, the X-Men franchise was somewhat reborn in a sense that it was really turned around. Days of Future Past is my favorite X-Men film franchise film. Uh, you know, the, the universe, X-Men universe favorite film, Days of Future Past. Uh, Deadpool's up there too, but Days of Future Past was absolutely spectacular. And before the film came out, they released the, the title for X-Men Apocalypse and Brian Singer was coming back. Um, and, you know, now we, with the film's just a couple weeks away. Uh, the first reviews are coming out, and they are just mixed. Now, before I get into any of this, which, oh, also, just a little disclaimer, I have not seen the film yet. Uh, I think you guys confused me with some other big people. I don't get to see films early. I don't get to go to big conventions. Why is that? Well, that's because I'm not a big up there person. Hopefully one day, we'll see where this all goes, but just for the future, I don't get to see films early or go to big conventions, usually, unless there's something, I don't know, but just haven't seen the movie yet, very much looking forward to it. Um, so, of course, I can't speak for my personal opinions, uh, but I definitely can give some insight as to what I'm now expecting from these first reviews. So, uh, another thing I just wanted to say, I think Days of Future Past is going to be one of the hardest movies to follow, um, even over something like uh, the Avengers, or even like, you know, do you know what I mean? Because even in the MCU, you have, even though you've got like standalone-ish franchises, like you've got the Iron Man films, you've got the Thor movies, you've got the Captain America movies, you have the Avengers films, you've got the Guardians of the Galaxy films, uh, you're going to be starting with the Spider-Man films, even though you've got your, your, you know, all your, your kind of more individual films, it's the because it's a big universe and pretty much it's not just a three film franchise it's more of a continuous stream of movies for a marvel film if you have one bad movie like so something like iron man 2 maybe thor the dark world uh you can easily snap back without question um from the next movie coming now with x-men they only have x-men um and because people are going to have so high expectations, uh, you already know that this film is definitely not going to get the same kind of buzz that Days of Future Past did. Um, and we can start with Apocalypse, because what I've heard from Apocalypse is that uh, he is a, he's a cool-looking, sounding villain. Um, but I, I guess throughout the movie, he's kind of just not all there, meaning that it's just... Different, uh, he has different maybe agendas throughout the movie. His overall plan, I guess, is is just fair. All that kind of stuff. Um, and, but, I mean, I, I guess he has this whole big job of recruiting, of course, the four horsemen, making that all happen. But I guess the overall plot plan from him is apparently lacking. Uh, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't even think about that because I was so caught up in pretty much everything else and that little Wolverine tease at the end of the th uh, third final trailer. Um, but from rewatching the trailers, you know, you have to look at it. You don't truly see a plan for Apocalypse. Okay, I guess Apocalypse shows up. He's like, hey guys, I'm Apocalypse, the first mutant. I'm here to get my four horsemen in. I, I guess I'm going to destroy the world because we're going to take everything from them. Everything they built will fall. Say it another five times, please. I haven't heard it enough. So the bottom line is, though, if you just look at some of this evidence just from the trailers, just from what we know about Apocalypse, we get it. He's the first mutant, but you don't really know why he's like, okay, it's time to destroy the world after all this time like you know is he unleashed i guess that's something that might be answered in the movie but even if he is unleashed what is his grudge against the world that everybody needs to be mutants i mean i just think they clearly need to state that i have no idea if they do or if they don't but um 
definitely something that I'm, I'm going to be looking for now in the film. Uh, I've heard many great things about this movie as well, though, like these introductions of all the new characters. I heard Cyclops, Jean Grey, they're spectacular. Uh, I also heard Mystique is actually very good. And I'm like, what in the hell could you be saying? Because from these trailers, Mystique has become, in the, from, for just this movie, Mystique was one of the parts I was least looking forward to. They made her out to be training the X-Men. Uh, she's a full-out villain, usually. Uh, you know, they, they, they kind of made it to seem like she'd be looking more like Jennifer Lawrence than Mystique. It'd be more like Jennifer Lawrence, like, Okay, let's fight! I'm gonna train you! Let's fight! Everything you thought you knew is wrong! Now let's redo every- I mean, it just- it, it, she, became, she seemed to be very unappealing to me. According to many reviewers, she is actually spectacular. And that is music to my ears because I love the Mystique character. And in both Days of Future Past and X-Men First Class, Jennifer Lawrence was killer in the role. And she played such a well-written, well-comic-book-adapted Mystique, especially in Days of Future Past. A kind of shady outlaw. That's kind of what I wanted for X-Men Apocalypse as well, because you don't really have, like, an anti-hero who can kind of work with you. And, I'm, I mean, clearly Deadpool's not making any appearances anytime soon. So, to have uh, Mystique kind of train the X-Men, I was kind of worried, but it seems like that's kind of on the right track. Uh, I've also heard Quicksilver has another, even better, uh, speed sequence. Uh, because, of course, everyone loved the first one when he's in the kitchen. That was Amazing. I guess there's an even better one. Um, and I, the, the moment I heard that, I, I just thought of from Daredevil to Daredevil Season 2, where you've got the hallway scene in Daredevil Season 1. And in Season 2, you've got like the down the stairs elevator sequence uh, from like Episode 3. Uh, that was, I mean, it almost, I don't know. I think, I think the down the stairs scene. Uh, fight scene in Daredevil Season 2 maybe top the hallway scene, although the hallway scene is probably one of the, in my opinion, one of the best action scenes ever to be put on uh, TV, media broadcast, all that stuff. Um, but aside from that, I'm just kind of expecting something similar in that sense. Um, I've also heard the beginning of the movie, the, like the first half, is so strong, and it's so well done, it's absolutely spectacular, uh, phenomenal, all this, all these big, these big words that mean great. Um, but then I hear, and I've been hearing, that the second half of the film kind of falls apart, and it has a pretty shitty ending, which... That kind of bothers me because if I already know a movie's gonna have a shitty ending, well, then I'm not as excited for it because you know endings are almost the best part of the films, right? You've you've got you have I mean I, I guess at the same time you know, at the same time not because then you've got to wait for a new movie, but you know the best thing about the endings is that they always set up something for next. What's coming next? What should I be excited for now? If this is gonna kind of just be like oh, well, we can just do this to destroy Apocalypse. Okay, well, why didn't you do that 45 minutes ago? Uh, I don't know. We were just wanted to draw out some more character development and all that other crap. Oh, okay. And then they just destroy Apocalypse that way, and then they're like, hey, we're the X-Men and we got new suits! Whoa! And then that's the end of the film? Like, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I mean, clearly, that's... that's this. These reviews, in my opinion have kind of put a negative connotation for me on this film. Uh, clearly, I'm still very excited for it. I'm going to be seeing it opening night, Memorial Day, or yeah, Memorial Day weekend. I'm probably going to see it a few times, actually, because it is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but just in general, for me, I am really looking forward to this movie, especially from the last trailer. Uh, but I just, I hate hearing some of this stuff because it definitely worries me that, hey, Maybe, they, maybe they're going to screw up again. You know, you don't want another last stand. From all the reviews I've heard, though, it's not anything close to that. It's still a very great and enjoyable comic book movie. And um, I've also heard it definitely does uh, do justice to the other two films in this somewhat um, second trilogy. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's just... If I know a film's going to have a bad ending, I'm not going to be as excited for it. I'm still very excited for it, um, but... 
you know, movies like Suicide Squad, Doctor Strange, they're probably a bit up there more now for me. And comic book wise, just from the, some of, from hearing some of this. Um, but like I said, still very excited for, to see the film. I'll be doing a few other uh, videos about some of the X-Men characters. And of course, I'll be doing my X-Men Apocalypse movie review like as soon as I can after I see the film. I'll probably be doing a night credit scene video, maybe Easter eggs. It all depends on what really happens. Um, so let me know your thoughts on some of these first these first reviews, right? Uh, is this what you want to hear? Is this bad news for you? Does it make you more excited, less excited? Let me know. Um, and if you have seen the film, please no spoilers or at least use a spoiler tag or something like that. Um, you know, I want I like to read your guys' comments and respond to the ones I can. So don't be a dick and just be like, hey, I'll spoil the film for Ryder because I'm a dick. You know, don't do that. No one likes those guys. But uh, let me know your thoughts and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click your like and subscribe. I'll be back later this week with some other great videos from Flash, Arrow, Shield, uh, maybe some other Marvel stuff, maybe some other, other stuff depending on what's released. Uh, let me know if you guys want any specific videos. I, I know that there's a lot of topics you guys would like me to talk about, but clearly I can't cover them all. Uh, but I will try to make time if you guys have some requests. If you want some other X-Men stuff, let me know. Wolverine 3, I know there's been some new news revolving around that. There's also Deadpool stuff. So you just got to let me know. We'll see where this all goes. Um, but uh, just, oh, one other quick thing. My schedule... Uh, has been kind of wonky the last couple months, um, and that's why videos have all kind of been coming out on like Saturdays, um, and like like I've been having like to release six or seven videos on like a Saturday instead of like my daily videos. Um, that's all changing. Uh, I had some had a prior engagement um, for the last couple months that just ended, so finally I will be back with more on time Flash, Arrow, just movie reviews, TV reviews. Regular news, trailer breakdowns. Um, I'm very excited for this. I'm also excited to do stuff like this over the summer. We've got a really big change coming over the summer. Uh, some rebranding, all that. So I just want to let you guys know about that. And uh, there's a ton of movie reviews coming. So if you're a fan of my movie reviews, make sure you're doing that. Go check out my new Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 3 review. Such a good show. I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. And keep riding, guys. Bye.